This video is in response to videos that supposedly disprove irreducible complexity. Hopefully this will clear things up as to what irreducible complexity really is and is not. I will be using Ken Miller, a well-known lecturer, as an example of those who preach that irreducible complexity is a failed concept. First of all, this is a short clip showing Miller's pseudo-logic using the mousetrap example. Um, I'm wearing a tie clip that looks like it's composed of a mousetrap. Now, it's not very elegant, but it does keep my tie in place. But what you'll see when I take this out is that this is a mousetrap from which I've removed two of the parts. I've removed the catch and the base hold. You can't catch any mice with this. But these three parts of the five-part mousetrap are perfectly functional in a different context. And one context would be holding my tie on, another context would be serving as a large paper clip, and a final con context that one of my friends used in high school would be as a viciously effective spitball launcher. I don't know about that spitball launcher, but what we first have to do is establish a reasonable definition of what irreducible complexity really is. Irreducible complexity means the system is so complex that removing one essential part will make the system non-functional, which means that the system evolving from zero up would be non-functional until all essential parts had formed and are present. And there is no other reasonable use for the essential parts individually. To be real, let's see how many generations it would take to evolve a complex system. Let's use vision as an example. Nielsen found that the evolution of the eye we've just seen would take a surprisingly short time. It would take about 250,000 generations. Okay, so let's say it might take 100,000 generations to evolve an imaginary organ system represented by Miller's mousetrap. If Miller was honest, he would cut off a couple of tiny segments from the trap, like I did in this picture. Everybody knows this is the way evolution works, from the ground up, not the fully functioning down. These chips would represent a few thousand genetic changes and many more generations. And what different functional context would these have for the host? Dust? For sure not as a spitwad gun. I'm sure Miller would think of something dramatic. So, on an imaginary basis, let's take a look at what the evolution of a mouse trap might look like in hundreds of thousands of steps and over hundreds of thousands of years. Could Miller think of a use for this part or this part? Is this a tooth cleaner? Is this a bookmark? It's pretty easy to see that Miller would have an impossible, not just a difficult, but impossible time trying to think of an advantage or use for all of these steps. The next clip shows Ken Miller lecturing on IC and the evolution of the bacterial flagellum and how it is not irreducibly complex. He said he's going to do something unbelievably difficult, more difficult than we could ever imagine. He's not going to remove only one protein from the 50 in the flagellum, not five, not 10, but 40. You can just feel the congregation is aghast. And we say, let's take away a whole bunch of the parts. How many? Um, not one. Not five, not ten. Let's take 40 of its 50 parts away. Now watch very carefully, because I'm going to do that experiment right there. There it goes. Again, Miller is working backwards, and he knows it. He makes it seem that he is going to do the most difficult thing imaginable by removing 40, 40 proteins. He then shows that the new device with 40 less proteins, now having only 10 proteins, is the type 3 secretory system of bacteria. This is only an illusion that he absolutely knows that he is perpetrating on his students. He is fooling them. He knows it would be impossible to remove one single protein from the flagellum motor at a time until there are only 10 left and find a new advantage for each removal. So he's taking an impossible situation for himself and turning it into a manageable situation. The other problem for Miller is the fact that the type 3 secretory system has a completely different design than the flagellum motor. It has a needle and basal body, and because it looks externally like the flagellum motor does not mean in any way that it was an evolutionary stepping stone to the flagellum motor. But any port in a storm, right? Once Miller has the congregation convinced that he did the most incredibly impossible thing, he can then simply say that there is an advantage for each step of the other 40 removals without naming any of them. He makes the congregation think that identifying advantages for all of the other steps is easy since he has already done the nearly impossible one. So let's take a look at what the evolution of the bacterial flagellum might have looked like. 
Each step shown, of course, represents thousands of generations, and each genetic change would have to be followed by another that had somehow accounted for what the previous one did. An incredible accounting task. For Miller to be correct, he would have to think of an advantage or use for each of these steps. Let's take a look at irreducible complexity in the context of a complex visual system. We'll simplify it down into four essential parts. The eyes, the visual cortex, the optic nerve complex, and the incredibly complex code formed by the retina. If any one of these parts evolves without the other three, this individual will see as well as a boulder. So is this system irreducibly complex? Of course it is. If Ken Miller lost the power cord or the motherboard for his computer, would he then say it was irreducibly complex? Probably not. He would say it's a tie holder or a pillow. Here is another Miller clip. It hasn't generated a single research publication that has even used the word irreducible complexity. It just hasn't impressed the scientific community. Why is that? Why is well, that? Because it's so logical and commonsensical. It would be nearly impossible to write any kind of scientific paper on something that is so logical. It would be like writing a paper on 1 and 1 equals 2. The main problem with irreducible complexity is the term itself. The word reducible gives Miller the license to cheat. It describes reducing parts from a completely evolved system. What the term should describe is a ground up or zero up scenario. A better term might be zero up improbable or ground up improbable meaning that it is wholly unlikely that the system could evolve in small steps because all of the essential parts required for function would have to evolve together to give the host species an advantage. Miller, once more, just because I love it. And we say, let's take away a whole bunch of the parts. How many? Um, not one, not five, not ten. Let's take 40 of its 50 parts away. Now watch very carefully, because I'm going to do that experiment right there. There it goes. The part <laughs> 